what President Eisenhower had called the military-industrial complex back in 1961, has in recent years evolved beyond the informal alliance between the military, politics and defense contractors. It now includes the media, Hollywood, toy makers and the commercial gaming sector. That's why most experts today speak no longer of the military-industrial complex. Instead, they have dubbed it the Military-Industrial Media Entertainment Network, or MIMENET. The MIMENET points to the close and informal collaboration that crosses the boundaries between militaries, politicians, arms manufacturers on the one hand, and the entertainment industry and academics on the other. It points to a new development in which the entire spectrum of the media today is mobilized for warfare in the information age. How did we get there? What does the MIMENET look like? What are the possible interests that have brought about this new form of collaboration of such diverse actors and industries? And how does it function? Our starting point is Hollywood and the symbiotic relationship between the movie industry and the military. For a long time, the Pentagon has recognized the power of celluloid storytelling and has actively encouraged Hollywood to create heroic portrayals of its wars. The relationship between Pentagon and Hollywood originated in the early 20th century. But it was in the 1930s, and in particular the 1940s, where this relationship was cemented. In 1942, the Pentagon opened its own office in downtown Los Angeles, called the Motion Picture Liaison Office. And with the US involvement in the Second World War, the goal was clear. It was to create images and movies with a clear agenda that justified its involvement in the Second World War. The aim was to produce propaganda. Renowned actors and filmmakers put their talents in the service of the military. Actors like Jimmy Stewart, Clark Gable, Henry Fonda or John Ford. But the capstone was director Frank Capra. He made a series of seven propaganda films called Why We Fight. Why We Fight was directly commissioned by the US government during World War II. Its aim? To justify to American soldiers their involvement in the war and to persuade a non-interventionist nation of the need to fight Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. In many ways, Why We Fight was a direct response to enemy propaganda, in particular Leni Riefenstahl's film Triumph of the Will. And in the heyday of the Second World War, no one really minded the propagandistic nature when the cause seemed so just. And even though much time has passed since, and even though propaganda has become less open and more subtle, the collaboration between the Pentagon and the Hollywood film industry has continued. Most American war movies over the last few decades have been produced in close collaboration between show business and the military. The long list includes famous movies like Top Gun, Pearl Harbor, Black Hawk Down, Wind Talker, and We Were Soldiers. And this relationship is symbiotic because both sides benefit. For the Pentagon, films are powerful means to create heroic myths and to rewrite history. They serve as recruitment tools to provide a steady flow of willing young patriots into military service. For Hollywood, collaborating with the military gives them access to billions of dollars worth of military kit, from helicopters to aircraft carriers, enabling filmmakers to make more spectacular battle scenes, which in turn generate more box office revenue. Provided, of course, that they accept the Pentagon's advice, that they toe the party line, and that they show the military of the United States in a positive light.